This video shows you how to create your first container engine for Kubernetes or OKE cluster. After logging in to the OCI console, you can go to the Kubernetes service by navigate, opening the menu and navigating to developer services and Kubernetes clusters. Also, you can just type in Kubernetes at the search bar and you, the service will pop up. Let's go to that service page. Uh, you'll notice that I already have a cluster here, but let's create a brand new one. The Create Cluster button gives us two options, the Quick Create Workflow and the Custom Create Workflow. The Quick Create Workflow assumes a lot of defaults and provides and creates all the networking components for us. Let's choose this. The Custom Create Workflow gives you much more flexibility when you create your cluster. Let's keep it simple. The, create, the quick create workflow basically asks a few questions. Let's name the cluster first, demo cluster. Uh, the compartment, um, the compartments in OCI are a way to organize resources and apply policies and permissions to it. So I have a compartment called Jeevan and I'm gonna create all my um, resources inside that compartment. We'll also get to choose the Kubernetes versions. We have a number of versions here to choose from here. Um, let's choose the latest one. The endpoint basically determines the visibility of the Kubernetes API endpoint. I'm gonna choose a public endpoint, make the endpoint available through the internet with a public IP address so that I can access it from anywhere. I still have to authenticate, but uh, the endpoint itself is accessible from anywhere. Um, the worker nodes, uh, we, have two op we, we have two options for the worker nodes. Um, these are the nodes on which our applications will actually run. Uh, and I'm gonna choose private worker nodes, um, basically the default here. Um, this will create these worker nodes in a private subnet. And um, I'll also choose the shape. Uh, the default shape that's chosen for us here is E3 flex, and I'm gonna stick with that. These flex shapes, you can choose the number of OCPU. So let's just bump this up to like two CPU and 32 gig uh, nodes. And I'll create three nodes. Um, and there are some advanced options that we can quickly take a look at. You can add SSH keys, enable image verification. I'm, not, I'm gonna leave everything at the default here. And I'm gonna quickly review all these settings, basically the cluster name, the compartment, the version of Kubernetes we're using. These are the defaults that the workflow is gonna uh, uh, create in terms of the networking resources. And um, we have <coughs> chosen to create one node pool um, with three nodes in them, uh, two OCPUs each and 32 gigs each. The uh, details like image name has been defaulted for us by the workflow. And when you create the uh, cluster, we have the option to stay, save this as a stack. What this means is um, based on this configuration, it's gonna generate a Terraform configuration and save that as a uh, Oracle Resource Manager stack. Um, that will allow you to run that Terraform uh, or download it and run it yourself um, and uh, manage this infrastructure through Terraform. Uh, let's, for now, just create the cluster um, through the console itself. You'll see that uh, all the networking components and the requisites are getting created. As these are getting created, the cluster is being set up. Uh, there are some asynchronous operations here. So after uh, all the prerequisites are uh, and the associated resources are being created, uh, you will see that the cluster itself is in the creating state. It's gonna take a couple of minutes for the cluster control plane to be created and the worker nodes to be created. So let's just give it a few minutes. In this video, we'll take a look at an OKE cluster and review its various components and settings. Now that the cluster has been created, the cluster is in the active state. Uh, we'll see all the details about this cluster, uh, the network information, all the networking uh, resources that were created for us by the workflow. There are links to these networking resources right here, the API subnet, uh, the public and private endpoints for the API. Um, the load balancer subnet and the various CEDA blocks that were used and so on. Uh, we'll also see some metrics here. Um, there are no unschedulable pods. The cluster just got created. Um, uh, so we're not gonna see any data immediately here. Um, and there are no unschedulable pods anyway. Um, let's look at the node pool really quick. We had one node pool and uh, let's look at the details for this node pool. Here we have, um, again, some metrics. Um, there are no um, you know, um, conditions on these uh, nodes. Uh, they just got created. 
Um, so let's, looking at the nodes themselves, uh, we'll see some more details about the nodes. All the nodes are in the ready status. And we'll see that the public IP address is unavailable because we chose private nodes. Um, and we'll see all the other details about the nodes as well. In this video, we'll take a look at how to install the OCI service operator for Kubernetes on your OKE cluster. Now that we have our cluster created, let's access and interact with it. To access the cluster, we'll see how we can set up our client. Um, there are two ways to access it. Uh, the first is using the Cloud Shell, which is a shell environment that OCI console provides within the browser. Uh, this is quick to set up, but for this exercise, let's use local access. Here, I need the client-side tooling already set up, which I have. Um, and this gives me an OCI CLI command that I can use to generate the cube config file. Uh, which contains the configuration required to connect to the cluster and interact with it. Since I have that copied, let's head over to our terminal and run that. So in the terminal, I just run that OCI CLI command and it says um, OCI CE cluster create cube config. That's going to create the cube config and it's going to save that to this file uh, in my home directory, the dot cube slash config. Uh, file and if a file already exists here, it's going to merge the configuration with that file all the other information about the cluster like the cluster ID is specified here. So let's run it So it found an existing file over there and it's merged the configuration and it's also set up my cube config to connect to this cluster now So let's go ahead and run a command to see that to check if we can see things that are running on this cluster we don't have any workloads deployed onto this cluster yet, so let's look at the system ports, for instance. Um, okay, let's just run that. And we see a bunch of uh, um, system ports running. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, now let's uh, start our uh, setup for the OCI um, service operator for Kubernetes. So let's over to the documentation for that. Um, the, uh, op the OCI service operator for Kubernetes is available on GitHub and the GitHub documentation is kept up to date. Um, so let's look at the installation instructions really quick. Okay, um, let's go to step one. And here we see the first thing we need to do is install the operator SDK. I'm just gonna head over here and copy the command. Um, Let's try that again. Okay, so I can use Homebrew to install this. Um, I already have it installed, but let's just run that anyway, just for completeness. This should be a no-op since I already have that installed. Uh, when that comes back, well, let's go over here and see what the next steps are. We will then set up uh, OLM or the Operator Lifecycle Manager and then deploy a OLM bundle for the um, uh, OCI Kubernetes, uh, uh, service operator for Kubernetes. Um, yes, so basically said it is there and it's up to date. And let's clear that. And let's go ahead with the operator um, OLM install. So this is going to connect to our cluster and install OLM on our cluster. It should take about a minute or so. It's going to get all the CRDs for the uh, OLM itself and uh, set it up on our cluster. It sets up the namespace. Uh, a couple of namespaces for operators and OLM. And as soon as the deployments become available, uh, this will be completed. Okay, so we see a quick status. We have a bunch of custom resource definitions, a couple of namespaces, a service account, cluster roles and role bindings, uh, all of uh, everything that is required to run the OLM already created. So now let's proceed. Uh, we just verified this as well. Now, in order for 
um, the OCI service operator for Kubernetes to interact with OCI because this operator is going to create resources on OCI. It needs to authenticate and authorize with OCI itself. It needs to have a principle. So when you're running this operator inside Kubernetes, the best way to do that would be to use instance principles. And if you're installing the operator on a uh, Kubernetes cluster that is running outside of OCI, then you could also choose to use user principles by setting up a user in OCI. Since we are already using this from inside of OCI, let's set up instance principle, uh, instance principles. Um, I already have these instance principles set up, so let's take a quick look at what I have set up. Here, I see a policy. I have defined a dynamic group called uh, OSOK dynamic group, and it has uh, various privileges inside this compartment. I have also create, uh, allowed this uh, dynamic group to manage the MySQL family and also use, to use uh, tag namespaces. So let's uh, head back over to the instructions. We have set up the uh, instance principles or the um, uh, authentication mechanism. The next thing to do would be to deploy um, OSWOC itself. So let's copy this command. Uh, it is provided as a bundle. You can you can do a Docker pull and get this bundle if you need to get that Docker image itself, or you could just run operator SDK run bundle and point it at that uh, Docker image. Let's do that. Let's head over to our terminal and quickly run that. And since uh, o OLM is already installed on our cluster, uh, uh, this should um, just take a minute or so. All the OCI specific CRDs and other resources will be created now. Um, the service operator for um, OCI has been installed. In this video, we'll take a look at how to create and manage MySQL DB system using the OCI service operator for Kubernetes. With the Oracle service operator for Kubernetes installed on our cluster, we can now start provisioning some OCI services. The operator currently supports three OCI services, which are the Autonomous Database Service, the Oracle Streaming Service, and the Oracle MySQL Database Service. For this demo, let's look at the MySQL Database Service. Since the operator is going to be interacting with OCI and creating resources inside an OCI tenancy, we need to give the operator the adequate permissions. Now, there are two ways to do this. If you are deploying the operator in, inside a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster inside OCI, like a, uh, an OKE cluster or uh, a cluster that you have set up with OCI compute resources, then you can uh, use instance principles. Um, if you are deploying um, the operator on, on a cloud other than um, on a, or on a Kubernetes cluster that is outside of OCI, you can use uh, user principles. The various specification uh, spec parameters for the uh, uh, custom resource are also mentioned on the GitHub page. Let's first um, uh, uh, set up a couple of prerequisites, uh, including the secret that will contain the username and password that we want to use for our MySQL database service. Let's quickly head over to the console and take a look at the policy that I've already created uh, for the operator. Here we see here we see a policy. Uh, this and this policy is assigned uh, to uh, a dynamic group which contains the members of the Kubernetes cluster, and they can use this instance principle to. Um, perform 
uh, various uh, networking operations within this compartment as well as manage the MySQL family in that compartment and also use the tag namespaces in the tenancy. Now let's go ahead and set up our MySQL uh, database system and the first thing to do is to set up a Kubernetes secret that will have the username and password for the database system that we're about to create. Let's head over to our terminal and create a secret. The secret should have two keys, one key called the username and the other key called password. And I'm just gonna generate a um, secret from the command line. Okay, let's use that. Uh, username is Scott and the password is tiger123 at at at. So now the um, uh, secret is created and uh, I also have a manifest that describes our custom resource which is a MySQL DB system. Things to note here, the API group is oci.oracle.com slash v1 beta1. The kind of this resource is the MySQL database system and this is enabled through the CRD that was um, installed through our um, uh, Oracle uh, OCI service operator for Kubernetes. Uh, we are setting some metadata information and we have the compartment ID, the display name, the shape name, the subnet ID and the configuration and various parameters. These parameters are all described on the GitHub page here. Now let's create this um, database system. Okay, so the database system is creating. Now the operator will pick that up and it will make the necessary OCI calls to uh, create the database system. Let's head over to our console and check uh, the creation of that database system. Okay, we have a new OSOC demo uh, database system being created. Uh, it will take a few minutes to get created and let's wait for the um, database system to be created.